Good evening, everyone. My name is Elizabeth, the Education Coordinator for Marlene's Market in Delhi. Tonight's special guest that we have with us is Kim Stevens. She is an educator from ION, an intelligence of nature company. Um, she is the uh, Senior Manager of Sales and Operations and Business Partnerships of, for ION as well. She is the daughter of a chiropractor and holistic and natural health um, and has been um, in this field uh, from the start. Before her time at ION, she studied herbalism, worked in health food stores such as um, ones like Marlene's here, and spent time as an independent rep for a, another supplement line. She's been with ION for over six years, serving various roles from customer support, managing sales, education, and um, the network for practitioners for four years. And um, we are so excited to have her with us this evening. Please welcome Kim Stevens. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, and to Marlene's Market and Delhi for giving us a platform to educate on this very important topic this evening. Glyphosate is making a lot of headlines as of late and with good reason. Today, we're going to be discussing what it is, how it is impacting human, animal, and environmental health, and steps you can take to protect, protect yourself and your loved ones from its effects. So let's start with what it is. The Oxford Dictionary tells us that glyphosate is a synthetic compound, which is a non-selective systemic herbicide, particularly effective against perennial weeds. But let's take a look at its history to get the full picture of the evolution of this chemical. In 1961, glyphosate was originally patented as a metal descaler and chelator that was used to descale commercial boilers and pipes. Descaling agents are effective metal binders, which grab onto calcium, magnesium, and heavy metals to make the metal water soluble and easily removable. With this ability, glyphosate is able to strip metals out of the soil, as well as from our bodies. Its next patent was as a broad spectrum herbicide in 1971. In 1974, Roundup brought to market by Monsanto, and this is how most of us know glyphosate. In 1991, the EPA changed its classification of glyphosate from a class C to a class E carcinogen, which suggests evidence of non-carcinogenicity for humans. The following year, Pioneer, or DuPont, paid Monsanto a one-time $500,000 payment to use their Roundup resistance gene in its soybeans. Monsanto's main form of profit from this deal would derive from additional sales of Roundup. Monsanto made it famous, but it went off patent as an herbicide in 2000 and is now manufactured by every major chemical company in the world. In 1996, Roundup Ready soybeans were commercialized by ASGRO in coordination with Monsanto and separately by Pioneer. This was the first year genetically engineered glyphosate tolerant crops were planted commercially in the United States. In 2002, Monsanto tapped into a whole new market with glyphosate by marketing to farmers as a way to desiccate wheat, as wheat is one of the only crops that must be dead before it is harvested. So a majority of the wheat in our country today, unless organic, is sprayed with glyphosate pre-harvest, which greatly increased usage rates. By 2007, glyphosate usage became twice that of the ne next most heavily sprayed pesticide, atrazine. The EPA reported agriculture agricultural use of glyphosate in the range of 180 to 185 million pounds per year. In 2010, Monsanto's most recent patent was awarded for glyphosate as an antimicrobial or antibiotic. This patent has led to major concerns about possible harm being caused by glyphosate, including the killing of beneficial gut bacteria, which causes immune system damage. In 2012, a toxicity showed, study showed how rats that ingested Roundup tolerant genetically modified maize or water con containing permittable levels of Roundup in the US suffered severe liver and kidney damage. This was the most high profile of many independent studies showing possible damage being caused by the glyphosate-based glyphosate herbicide. 
And today, it may be one of the most dangerous and prevalent antibiotics, indeed the, and indeed the most unavoidable toxin in our food supply. In the last several years, glyphosate has been the subject of many headlines for its harmful effects. In 2015, the World Health Organization's cancer agency, IARC, classified glyphosate as a probably carcinogenic to, to humans. In 2017, internal Monsanto and EPA communications revealed the reality of the 30 plus year glyphosate cover-up. That same year, internal Monsanto and EPA communications, uh, I'm sorry, I'm reading that twice. These records demonstrate that the EPA's efforts came to, at the demands of Monsanto and that the EPA officials were helpful enough to keep the chemical giant updated on their progress of their, their lawsuits. In 2018, Dwayne Johnson, a California father who has non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, won a landmark cancer trial in San Francisco. Monsanto was ordered to pay 78 million in total damages. Johnson was a former school groundskeeper who cited his cancer was caused by Monsanto's glyphosate-based weed killer Roundup. In 2021, in response to many glyphosate-related lawsuits, Bayer announced they would be pulling glyphosate products, including Roundup, from the U.S. home and garden market. Bayer will no longer sell glyphosate-containing products to U.S. home gardeners beginning in 2023. The product will be replaced with a different active ingredient at that time. Bayer settled around 100,000 cases, paying out $11 billion as of May 2022, and there are still 30,000 lawsuits pending. 90% of their recent claims come from the residential home and garden market. And just this summer, the U.S. Supreme Court rejected Bayer's appeal to dismiss the thousands of legal claims that have been filed by those who claim that glyphosate exposure was the cause of their cancer. However, glyphosate will still be used for commercial applications. By 2014, glyphosate use in the U.S. had increased ninefold since 1996 and 15-fold worldwide. From the late 70s, when it was first brought to market in 2016, there was a hundred-fold increase in the frequency and volume of application of glyphosate-based herbicides worldwide. Today, we are spraying an estimated 300 million pounds on U.S. soil every year, 4.5 billion pounds worldwide every year. It is being used on genetically modified crops like soybean and corn, which are our predominant crops grown in this country. And it's used heavily as a wheat desiccant, pre-harvest drying agent on other crops as well, including beans, oil seeds, such as peanuts, coconut, and soybean, and also sugar cane. You can see this astounding rate of increase visually here. When it was first released, farmers had to be very diligent with how they applied this herbicide as it would kill anything it touched. So farmers had to spray the perimeters of their fields with, with the creation of GMO Roundup Ready crops in 1996, that meant they could then spray glyphosate directly on their crops. Glyphosate can potentially drift from the site of application, moving from one field to another and damaging crops that are not genetically modified to tolerate the herbicide. Drift can cause non-GMO crops to suffer from lower yields or total crop loss. This risk and fear of damage to non-GMO crops from herbicide drift has contributed to the increase in the use of genetically modified crops. Farmers are now choosing to grow GMO crops instead of non-GMO crops to protect themselves from loss of profits. Due to years of repeated spraying with glyphosate-based herbicides, weeds have developed resistance and rendered these herbicides less effective, further causing farmers to spray even more glyphosate. In 2016, glyphosate contamination was discovered in many popular American consumer foods, which I quote, found alarming levels of glyphosate in General Mills Cheerios and Honey Nut Cheerios, Kellogg's Corn Flakes, Raisin Bran and Frosted Flakes, and PepsiCo's Doritos, Ritz Crackers, and Stacy's Simply Naked Pita Chips, as well as many more famous products. A Canadian Food Inspection Agency report found glyphosate in 90% of pizza, 88% of wheat flour, 84% of crackers and fresh pasta, 83% of cooked pasta, 
80% of dried pasta, 75% of oats, 70% of chickpea flour, and 67% of lentils. Beyond what is being found in our food, glyphosate is being found prevalently in our soils as well. Glyphosate is a water soluble compound, which means it is able to permeate groundwater and it stays in the water system. Because of this, glyphosate is now being found in 75% of rain and air samples in much of the US. Even more concerning, Moms Across America performed a study on human breast milk and discovered its presence there, even in women who were attempting to avoid this chemical through eating an organic diet. And in 2016, the University of California, San Francisco conducted a public testing project that discovered glyphosate in 93% of urine samples collected across the US. That is well over the permitted levels of tap water in the EU, which is 0.1 parts per billion. So how is glyphosate impacting human health? Let's talk about um, that for a few minutes. We've established that glyphosate is an antibiotic, meaning that it disrupts the balance of your microbiome. The microbiome is a population of bacteria, fungi, and protozoa that inhabit our various barrier systems, such as the gut, nasal passages, and skin. A thriving microbiome is absolutely essential to overall health. Dysbiosis in the gut microbiome is a precursor to countless chronic conditions, many of which go far beyond digestion, including cancer, diabetes, obesity, and depression. Furthermore, the microbiome helps protect us from toxins in the environment, and to do so, it relies in part on the shikimate pathway. The shikimate pathway is a seven-step metabolic process that only exists in the plant and microbial kingdom. It does not exist in animals. It is responsible for making five of our nine essential amino acids. These amino acids are deemed essential because they cannot be synthesized from scratch by the body fast enough to supply its demand and must therefore come from the diet. So while we don't use the shikimate pathway, fungi and bacteria indeed do. The way glyphosate functions as an herbicide is by blocking this essential pathway. Glyphosate is causing a direct inability to synthesize amino acids and proteins, making it much harder for the microbiome to thrive. The amino acids that are being blocked from production are the aromatic amino acids. These are responsible for making the alkaloids, which are the medicinal qualities of our food. Here are a few examples of what these blocked essential amino acids do in the body. Phenylalanine is necessary to produce dopamine, which has an effect on depression, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, Parkinson's disease, chronic pain, and osteoarthritis, to name a few. Tryptophan helps produce melatonin, which helps regulate the sleep-wake cycle, and serotonin, which helps regulate appetite, sleep, mood, and pain. The liver can also use tryptophan to produce niacin, also known as vitamin B3, which is needed for energy metabolism and DNA production. And tyrosine is in all tissues of the human body and in most of its fluids. It helps the body build proteins and produce enzymes, thyroid hormones, and the skin pigment melanin. It is an essential component for the production of several important neurotransmitters, which help nerve cells communicate, including epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Oh, excuse me. There we go. Even more concerning than that, than that is the way that glyphosate directly impacts our health. Your gut membrane is the first line of internal defense from toxins. Research in our lab at ION has shown that glyphosate at levels acceptable by the FDA reduces the integrity of your gut lining through disruption of the tight junctions that bind epithelial cells together. We measure the gut line integrity through TIER, which stands for trans-epithelial electrical resistance. The higher the resistance is, the stronger the barrier is. Conversely, lower TIER equals increased permeability of the gut lining, also known as leaky gut. Leaky gut is a condition in which the tight junctions or cellular seals in our gut lining become damaged, allowing toxins and other foreign particles to seep into the bloodstream, which in turn can ignite a cascade of chronic inflammation. 
These results indicate that glyphosate causes a breakdown of the protective barrier between your gut and your bloodstream, not only altering your gut lining, the terrain upon which your microbiome lives and thrives, but by opening the gates to foreign particles that directly assault your immune system, causing inflammation. And in the presence of both glyphosate and gluten, which happens when gluten is desiccated with glyphosate, there is even a more severe reduction in tear. You can see that from the cell images here. The image on the left-hand side of the screen is a normal gut membrane. Those green lines are the protein structures I was referring to as tight junctions. The slide on the right-hand side of the screen is your gut membrane exposed to the EPA's safe level of glyphosate uh, after 30 minutes time. There is a complete loss of that connection between the cells and you can see that there is free reign for things to flow from your gut into your bloodstream at that point. On the bar graph, you, we are measuring tear in ohms. Um, and you can see the vehicle is the control. So that's the integrity measured across a normal gut lining, a healthy gut lining. With the introduction of glyphosate uh, and gluten, you see almost an equivalent loss of that tear. And then when combined, there's almost a total loss of that tight junction integrity. Foundational, excuse me, foundational and imperative to your gut health are your tight junctions. Tight junctions are Velcro-like protein structures that perform vital functions, such as holding cells together and forming protective and functional barriers throughout your body. In the gut, they act as intelligent gatekeepers to regulate what gets into your bloodstream and to your cells and what is rejected and excreted from the bowels. Without them, you also won't have proper regulation of the mucosal terrain that your microbiome lives on. But tight junctions are not unique to the gut membrane. Every membrane in your, in your body is held together by tight junction proteins. This includes your vascular system, your kidney membrane, your blood brain barrier, even your skin is held together by tight junctions. And glyphosate degrades all of your body's barriers. One of the unique qualities of glyphosate again is that it is a water soluble toxin. Monsanto has claimed that glyphosate is safe for human consumption because it is water soluble, saying that we would excrete it through our urine as quickly as we consumed it. Because of this water soluble quality, once glyphosate causes leak at your gut, your first line of defense, it goes systemic and it then flows throughout the body, breaking apart every protective barrier in your body before it is processed and excreted by your kidneys. If you have all kinds of foreign particles, toxins, and irritants breaking through your barrier and hitting your immune system, it is having to rapidly produce antibodies for everything it doesn't recognize, and you will enter a chronic inflammatory cascade. If we can keep this first domino of your gut membrane from falling, we believe at ION that we can alleviate this cascade of chronic inflammation. Currently, the US safe dose for glyphosate is 1.75 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day. In Europe, it is more than five times less that, at 0.3 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day. Although these levels may seem reasonable at first glance, both allowable daily intakes in the US and EU have already been proven to be far too high by independent peer-reviewed studies. Glyphosate has been flagged by the World Health Organization as a probable carcinogen, with other research indicating that Roundup is a carcinogen, as well as a cause of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Further, studies also show that glyphosate consumption can damage sperm, cross the placenta to a fetus, and lead to preterm birth. In the pilot phase of the most comprehensive study ever done on glyphosate and glyphosate-based herbicides, this was known as the global glyphosate study. It was shown that glyphosate-based herbicides cause genotoxicity, alteration of the intestinal microbiome, as well as reproductive and developmental effects in both male and female rats at the currently considered safe level in the US of 1.75 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day. Other studies have also shown changes in gene function and DNA damage at that same level. And additional studies have shown kidney and liver damage in rats at just 0.1 milligrams per kilogram per day. So how can we protect ourselves and our loved ones from glyphosate? 
Here are a few ways to mitigate your glyphosate exposure and its effects on your health. First, eating organic. Since animals are supposed, supposedly unaffected by glyphosate-based herbicides, the first concern that arose from this ubiquitous herbicide was its effects on crop health, specifically its interaction with crop nutrition. The absorption characteristics of glyphosate are different from most other herbicides. Glyphosate has been purported to reduce the uptake and translocation of nutrients in crops, with recent evaluations on the chelating ability of glyphosate highlighting it as a key factor in nutrient deficiencies. Glyphosate is never permitted in organic food production since it is a synthetic pesticide that the USDA's organic regulations prohibit. But remember, 75% of air and rainwater samples in the US are testing positive for glyphosate. So that this does not mean that all organic food is 100% free of this chemical. Regenerative agriculture follows many of the same holistic, or excuse me, follows the holistic land management practice that leverages the power of photosynthesis in plants to close the carbon cycle and build soil health, crop resilience, and nutrient density. True regenerative agriculture mimics nature and the symbiotic relationship between plants, the soil microbiome, and human nutritional needs, and chemical inputs are replaced with practices such as planting cover crops and using mulch to prevent weeds. They also do not use synthetic herbicides and pesticides. Growing your own food is the best way to know exactly what is going into your food and has many additional benefits, such as reconnecting you with nature and exposing you to beneficial microbes that are in the soil. And the third way listed here to mitigate glyphos glyphosate's negative impacts on our health is to support and strengthen our tight junction integrity. ION's products were created to do just that. ION Gut Support is a liquid gut-brain health supplement that goes beyond probiotics, helping to support tight junction integrity and diversify your microbiome the natural way, even in the presence of toxins such as glyphosate. It is soil-derived and U.S.-sourced. ION Gut Support isn't bacteria. It is a family of molecules that are made by bacteria, and its active ingredient, humic extract from ancient soil, is naturally rich in a variety of trace minerals and amino acids, as well as the molecules that bacteria use to communicate with each other. Bacteria use these molecules to regulate many functions in the body, including your tight junction function. And ION provides the microbiome this innate necessary communication to reinforce your body's barriers of protection against toxins. By strengthening tight junctions or cellular seals, ION not only reverses the ability of glyphosate to tear apart those critical seals, but further defends your body from the damages of toxins and foreign particles that would otherwise seep into your bloodstream. In third-party peer-reviewed studies, ION has been shown to prevent damage that glyphosate causes to the tight junctions, even when this toxin is in, uh, in play. In the top left image, we see what a normal gut membrane should look like, the tight junctions, again, are stained with immunofluorescence there. Those green lines are those protein tight junction structures. The top right image shows glyphosate damage to that membrane after 30 minutes. And that is, again, the EPA's safe level, what they claim is safe for us to consume. The bottom left image shows the normal gut lining with the addition of ion gut support. And already you can see that those green lines are brighter, meaning the tight junctions are, are increased in their integrity or their tier. And the bottom right image demonstrates ion's gut support, ion gut support's ability to prevent glyphosate's damage to the tight junctions. So we actually see a stronger gut membrane when in the presence of toxins, showing this beautiful yin-yang effect of the body to resist the damage um, when it has the tools it, it needs to do so. Looking at this from the tier perspective, in this bar graph, we see that glyphosate decreases the integrity of small bowel tight junctions by 76%. So the vehicle is the normal um, small bowel lining. Um, with glyphosate, we lose 76% of that tight junction expression after only 30 minutes. The first bar here, I'm sorry, the second bar is just adding ion. So ion alone increased here in small bowel cells by 93%. With the introduction of glyphosate on that healthy membrane, we see an almost total loss of tight junctions. 
And in the final bar, ion was shown to prevent glyphosate's damage to tight junctions when placed together on the cells. At all, excuse me, as illustrated by there being no significant difference between the first bar, the control, and the ion and the glyphosate bar on the end there. In addition to, gut, to the gut membrane, tight junctions are also found in the skin, and glyphosate can cause damage to those too. Ion skin support uses the same innovative blend as ion gut support, combined with various bioavailable minerals, including silicon as monomethyl silinetriol, zinc gluconate, copper gluconate, and magnesium citrate. Ion skin support is specially formulated to work with keratinocytes, which are your skin cells, stabilizing free radical production and promoting an increase in glutathione, which is your body's most important antioxidant. Ion skin support is scientifically proven to strengthen your barrier against toxins, support a healthy response to the sun, and improve hydration. The first graph here, um, we're looking at some skin support science here. The first graph we're looking at is ROS production, which stands for reactive oxygen species. Lower ROS means less stress on the cells, and here indicates lower production of free radicals in response to UVB3 and UVB6 light. The first bar is normal skin cells. You can see how ROS increases with exposure to both UVB3 and UVB6 light, and how ion skin support mitigates that free radical response with both and returns ROS production to a normal, healthy level. In the second graph on the left hand side, I'm sorry, on the right hand side of the page, we show ion skin support's ability to promote increased tear or protective resistance in normal skin cells. Again, that tier is transepithelial electrical resistance, and that's how we measure the integrity of those membranes. Our pets, unfortunately, are also being exposed to glyphosate and at levels much higher than we are, um, as much as 10 times higher in their food. We've created a product to protect them from this toxin using the same humic extract with the addition of silicon as MMST, that monomethyl silinetriol. This formula supports their digestion, their kidney function, immune function, and vitality. Lastly, you want to support your gut membrane from its start, which is at your sinuses. That gut membrane runs from your sinuses all the way to your rectum. This, the ion sinus support is the same formula as ion gut support and helps to rinse your nasal pass passages of chemical and environmental toxins and allergens and promotes healthy nasal breathing. While the products I just discussed will help defend your body from glyphosate's effects, it is important that we try to avoid this chemical as much as possible. Every year since 2004, the Environmental Working Group ranks the pesticide contamination of 46 popular fruits and vegetables. The guide is based on test results by the Department of Agriculture and the FDA of around 45,000 samples of produce. It is important to note that the samples are tested for pesticides after they have been prepared to eat to be eaten. This means the produce has been thoroughly washed and when applicable, it's been peeled as well. After these preparations, pesticide residues are still detected on many of these fruits and vegetables, but these are the lowest um, uh, of the ones tested. The Environmental Working Group's Clean 15 list provides consumers with the knowledge of specific crops that have the lowest pesticide residues in non-organic produce. A small amount of sweet corn, papaya, and summer squash sold in the United States are produced from genetically modified seeds, so it is important to buy organic varieties of these crops if you want to avoid genetically modified produce. Conversely, the Environmental Working Group also reports on produce that tests for the highest levels of pesticides. And when consuming these foods, it is highly recommended to seek out organic options whenever possible. And I'm just gonna leave this for a second so you all can read through that list um, or take a screenshot of it. All right. And finally, it is necessary that if we want to ex uh, exact change, that we make our voices heard about the use of this toxin in our food supply. Our founder and CEO, Dr. Zach Bush, has created a petition on change.org 
And we would love to have your support by adding your name so that we can not only hit the 150,000 signature mark and become one of the top signed petitions ever on that platform, but also so that we can stop the spraying of this toxin on our food and prevent its negative effects on our health for our future generations. You can find this peti petition on change.org by searching ban glyphosate Zach Bush. There are several ban glyphosate petitions on there, uh, but to find this one, you need to also add Zach Bush in your search term. And this concludes our presentation. Um, thank you all for spending your valuable time with us this evening, and I hope you come away from this more informed and empowered about glyphosate and what you can do to protect yourself and your loved ones from its effects. You can visit intelligenceofnature.com or Marlene's Market for more information or to purchase these products. Um, and for any questions about this presentation and the information shared in it, you can email us at info at intelligenceofnature.com, or I believe we might be taking some questions now if you're willing to stay around and ask those. Any questions, folks? Feel free to enter in the chat box if you have any at this time. And I'm going to enter in that email address here in the chat box and in the live stream. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Oh, of course. Thank you so much, Kim. Absolutely. Fabulous presentation. Thank you. I, um, I'm so honored to have been able to deliver it. It is such an important topic um, and such a relevant one for our time. Um, luckily, we're seeing some movement on this front, but um, it's it's been many years in the making and a lot of people, um, you know, be, being the squeaky wheel to make that happen. Exactly. And it's so wonderful that um, Zach is um, putting out this petition and um, folks who are watching, you can be a part of the movement. Absolutely. And since you have. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I can actually put the link for this petition in there as well. Oh, fabulous. So let me know if anyone has any questions. I may have gone quicker than um, your normal presentations go. So I'm happy to fill in the time with any questions that anyone has. I don't know if you saw, but there were so many moments that my jaw dropped at the numbers. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, it is astounding. Um, it, yeah, I, it's it's hard to believe that there hasn't been any movement um, on by our regulatory boards that are supposed to be keeping us safe from these kinds of things um, before now. It kind of makes sense that um, there's been like an upswing in people having um, food allergies and gut issues, and it um, there's a lot of people that can't eat wheat from the U.S., but when they go to Europe, they can have all the pasta and bread that they want, and they don't have a reaction, yeah. which is great, but, um, you know, we are stepping forward. And hopefully, um, with the help of ION, everyone's guts can be happy and healthy. Absolutely. And that's such a, a great point that you just made. And um, it definitely indicates that there is something different about the wheat in this country than there is in those countries that they visit and, and have no issue consuming um, that food. So, um, you know, our strong theory is that difference is the the fact that our, our majority of our wheat in this country is sprayed with glyphosate right before it's harvested. Um, and that stuff does not get washed off. So it immediately goes into processing and onto your plate and into your gut. And we've seen what that does to the gut membrane. So um, yeah, yeah, those pictures were day and night. I mean, what that one picture was within like 20 or 30 minutes? 30 minutes of exposure. Um, it completely degrades that protective barrier, which is is your most important. It is the first line of defense. Um, and so once that falls, 
toxins are free to get into the bloodstream and, and roam and do as much damage as they can uh, before being taken care of, hopefully, by, by the body's defenses. But um, that, that first line of defense is extremely important. And so um, we have peer-reviewed science, uh, not only with glyphosate, but also with gluten. Um, and that's available on our website, on our science page. If you'd like to read those papers, they're there for, um, for everyone to look at. Um, we've also got some human clinical trials with some pretty amazing results there showing lowered chronic inflammation markers after two weeks of usage, um, lower levels of glyphosate in the body, um, you know, in huge increases in lysine, which is um, the precursor of collagen production and uh, or a precursor of collagen production and is one of those essential amino acids that glyphosate is blocking. So it does indicate the microbiome's ability to produce those essential amino acids for us when it's supported in the right way by this essential communication that it needs. And, and that is what is in all of ION's products. That is the the unifying um, formula or, or ingredient in all of ION's products. Yay! Oh, and um, folks can get it down at Marlene's or online and um, oh, visit Marlene's. We need to support our retail stores so you can get it much quicker. Just jumping into the, one of their stores and they'll have some staff that can answer your questions or they can reach out to one of us um, if if any of the questions um, they don't have the answers to because the, we have heard I've been with this company for six years and and still people ask questions that I've never heard asked before. And I'm like, oh, I wonder what the answer to that is. We have a great team that is um, a great resource for, for our, our boots on the ground in the sto retail stores. And we'll, we'll definitely get you that answer. Thank you so much, Kim, for your expertise and all that you do at Ion. Oh, thank you for having us and for allowing us to talk about this. It's extremely important. And we're so honored to to be here with you. Thank you. <laughs> well, everyone have a good night and um, take good care. And um, um, I hope everyone had a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.